Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Pay attention if you're in the market for a gator. Maybe you'll avoid a $35,000 mistake. I'm not much of a gator dealer myself. I've had a few trade-ins over the years, but I bought what you see behind me for myself, for my own purposes, not really for my current place, but we're hoping to find our dream property sometime soon. And I kind of want to have my ducks in a row, have all the equipment I need. I happen to find a relatively good deal on a super low hour gator here. I haven't put a lot of time on it, but it's enough to give you a good overview. There's not a lot of great videos out there that are not a salesman. I'm not, I don't sell gators. I'm not going to sell this to you unless I decide to sell it down the road, but I'm not in the market. I'm just going to give you my take on it, the good, the bad, the ugly as well. You know, so if you found this video helpful or enjoyable, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. That would really help out the video's performance. Hit that subscribe button right down below if you want to see more information, more helpful videos on tractors, trucks, and trailers and read through that description below as well for all you tractor owners, a lot of helpful links right down there. Now, I'm probably not as high on this John Deere Gator as I am on the tractors. If you watch the channel, you know, I kind of prefer the John Deere Green. I think Kubota's great as well. I may have to get an RTV at one point down the road. We'll see how this goes, but, but there's a couple big hitters on here that are really problematic for me. However, there's a lot of good points as well. I'm gonna give you just the initial impressions. If you own one of these Gators, this is the John Deere 865R. It's the creme de la creme, the heap of the pile. I mean, it's got all the options, all the features, the bells and whistles, that kind of thing that you would expect on a piece of equipment that's this expensive. So I get it, it's a big chunk of money. Get the real opinion from somebody that owns this piece of equipment. I spent my own hard earned money on this, I'll tell you straight. So quick details on what I bought here. It was a used Gator, only had like 10.8 hours or something on it. So it was nearly brand new, but came with a big salter back here that I actually already sold off. I just didn't really have a need for that. This is the diesel version of the Gator as well. It's got the HVAC cab on here, air conditioning and heat, of course. And then you're gonna see the six way John Deere plow up front. I made a whole separate video just about taking this plow on and off. So I'm not gonna go into a ton of in-depth detail about how to do that. But if you're interested in the market, watch that video. It's not exactly a piece of cake to take the plow on and off. I mean, it definitely gets easier even the second time you do it, but it kind of had me missing my John Deere tractor with either the snow pusher or a plow on it. So overall, I probably have somewhere in the $34,000 ballpark invested in this as a used piece of equipment. I didn't save a ton over new, but I was paying cash and I saved enough where it was nice to save even a few thousand dollars. So I put a handful of hours on this. You know, I'm still getting familiar with it. I'll tell you, even around the house here, I really love this power tilt bed. I mean, it's literally pushing a button to raise it and lower it. It's really awesome. We just stack up all the extra cardboard that we're gonna take out to the burn pile in here and a piece of cake, especially on those chilly days with this cab, you don't ever have to really get out of the cab besides just undoing the tailgate. Oh, but on the tailgate, let me show you more about this. So this is the tailgate on here. It's a, it's a plastic tailgate, so um, it's pretty robust. It's not gonna really corrode and rust and dent like a lot of the older gators that I've seen out there. It is gonna have a built-in ruler right down here as well, which is nice if you're, you know, ice fishing or who knows, whatever else you're doing. But the one thing I will say, and it's getting easier with time, is that it doesn't always latch like it does uh, right there. So you'll see how it shifts over. It can shift one way or another, and you'll find it kind of binds up. However, I will say that's getting easier with time. <clears throat> so maybe there's just a little break-in period there, but you can see the issue I'm running into. So you kind of got to find that sweet spot, but once you have it in that sweet spot, unless you do something to kind of shift it out of place, it'll go ahead and latch like it should. Now I do want to mention there were other options I could have added on, maybe I will over time, but there were uh, different side rails you could put on here. There was a spare tire mount, I think a fuel can holder, probably some other things as well. So a lot of cool ways to outfit uh, the bed area. A couple other convenience features that I added on, these rear facing LED lights, it did already have these same lights for the front facing, but I wanted a pair for the back as well because you just never know. I mean, lighting is so important, especially you know on winter days like this and fall days when it gets dark so early. So a lot of work to be done in the dark or if you're plowing as well. I also added on these external mirrors. I just thought that they were a nice, easy thing to have for better visibility. You are gonna have one mirror, a rear view mirror in there, which is actually kind of oversized for what I think it probably needed to be. So that's really nice for visibility as well, but these are a nice add on and not too expensive either. So of course you are gonna have a steel chassis and there is a steel frame for the cab as well, a rollover structure there, but you're gonna see a lot of uh, molded plastic or poly panels on the doors, you know, on uh, the body all down here onto the bed. 
and uh, on the front as well on the hood and I'm a big fan of that material. You see a lot of the older Gators, a lot of the older Kubota RTVs that are just rusted out piles of junk. So I am perfectly okay, especially with something that's fairly robustly designed uh, like these uh, body panels and doors are right here. I think I would rather have this if I had the option side by side. Give me this material here. It's going to hold up to those dents and dings and, and rust and corrosion over time a whole lot better than steel. Now, if we're talking about the cab, I will say I am impressed by this. It's very quiet, you know, driving down the road. I've had this out in the woods in my hunting lease as well. I've been snow plowing in it once. That's how pathetic our winter has been this year. But it's very quiet, it's very comfortable, the seats are very comfortable. The one thing I wish it had were armrests. I find myself constantly looking for armrests, you know, like my truck or even like my, my 1025R or the 4066R tractor. That's the one thing I wish this really had that I kind of find myself missing, especially when I'm using the uh, snowplow control right here, you know, and you're just constantly trying to fine tune and, and feather this control in the different directions. So again, I don't want to sound like I'm really complaining. I mean, it's a very nice, interior here very nice cab on here but i feel like if you're paying thirty thousand dollars i don't know you kind of miss those little things that maybe you feel like should be included on basically a car this is not completely decked out with every option i did skimp out i didn't have a radio added i thought maybe i would tackle that myself down the road but you got the knockouts and eat up each upper corner there for the uh, speakers as well I don't know. So far, I don't really miss the radio, but it's an option that you can get. I think it fits in this uh, section right here, or maybe it goes up top, one or the other. But you got your heat and your AC controls right here with your fan and everything else. I haven't really had a chance to test the AC. Not sure how that performs, but the heat so far has been, well, you can see it's in the off position right here. This is where I uh, keep it most of the time because it gets pretty hot pretty quick. Um, you don't really need it. You know, I mean, as long as you're out of the elements, I keep this stored in my garage. So if it was sitting outside for a long period of time, maybe then I'd crank the heat more often. So this is a three seater. You've got three seat belts, one there, uh, one in the middle, and then mine, of course, I added on these seat covers. It's a, a split bench seat. So uh, it's two seats over here and then the operator's station. This also flips up. You got some storage down underneath here. Don't know if there's a drain. Yeah, it looks like there's a drain plug down there as well. So you could probably fill this with as a cooler with some ice and um, have that as an option as well. Pretty easily cleanable floorboard in here. Of course, you have all your standard switches for lights. These are the work light controls uh, for up top on the front and the back. Headlights over here, tilt steering too. You've got it all. It's, it's just a little button here to push uh, four wheel or two wheel. Locking rear differential, you got your front wiper. If we take a look at the dash here, I've actually never even scrolled through it, but it's gonna show your fuel level, engine temperature, the speed you're going, hours that are on there. If I hit that button, Odometer, 27.4 miles, presumably. Trip, you can have a trip meter on there too. So a few things to scroll through. I'm not sure what this little other button does up top, but that looks like that is gonna be adjusting the brightness of the display. So, uh, I don't know, five different levels it looks like. So I'm probably gonna leave that on the brightest level for now. Now, something super cool that I just realized is that this actually doubles as a hunting blind. Check out this pop open window. Watch out deer, here I come. Look at that. Let's talk about storage really quick. It does have a pretty good amount of storage in here considering there's not a whole lot of space to begin with, but each door will have a little cubby. You can see the cutout as well for a drink. Uh, also up top, just on the dash, you're gonna have more cup holders for more drinks, another little storage cubby. You also have a glove compartment and of course the under seat storage. So a lot of little nooks and crannies to shove things, gloves, little small tools, drinks, snacks, whatever you wanna bring with you. I was really interested to know this, so you guys might be as well, but this easily fits inside my standard nominal seven foot high garage door just at my house. So you're just your regular garage door height. It will fit in there very easily. Nothing to worry about there. Okay, so I know I told you there's a few big things that I really don't like about this machine. And the first big one is gonna be the CVT transmission. You know, first of all, I feel like it's kind of clunky to switch between neutral, reverse, high, low. Um, it's getting smoother even in the few hours that I've owned it. So maybe that's just something that has to kind of break in a little bit and, and kind of smooth out. But coupled along with that, I feel like, I mean, I can, I can cram the pedal, you know, uh, to the floorboard and this thing just kind of goes burn. It does not accelerate fast by any stretch of the imagination. When I'm in here by myself, 
Uh, top speed I've had about 37 miles an hour. Now, when my hefty brother is in here along beside me like he was today, 33 was a top speed. So if that tells you anything. So keep in mind, this is the diesel engine that I have in here. I know there's a gasoline engine. I've had a quite a few uh, four by fours or four wheelers that uh, accelerate very quickly in the Kawasaki's and uh, the Yamaha's and everything else. So I have to imagine the gas version of this is going to accelerate, respond a lot more quickly and have a lot higher top end speed. However, on the flip side, I really don't plan on going 50 or 60 miles an hour too often. So mid thirties is pretty much okay for everything I'm doing. It's more the lag and the very slow acceleration that are a problem to deal with. So I'd done some research. I knew before I purchased this that this was gonna be a slower response and a slower machine overall compared to its uh, gasoline counterpart. For me though, I went with it for a couple of reasons, even though it was more expensive to go with the diesel. I have an extra diesel tank at my shop, all my other equipment, my tractors, my trucks are all diesel as well. So I just wanted to keep uh, one fuel supply on hand. And, and when I have other folks working for me, I really wanted to minimize the chances of contaminating fuels, cross contamination. So I went with it for that reason there. Uh, also, I'm gonna leave this to you guys to kind of debate down below in the comments, but I feel like diesel engines are always gonna have more torque. However, there were some comments that I read in, in forums uh, that said there is not more torque on this machine than there is in the gasoline counterpart so somebody that knows more about that than i can leave a comment down below i'm just going to say this thing has plenty of power for what i'm looking to do with this so that wasn't really my concern the other big complaint that i have believe it or not is going to be this six-way plow and it's not that i don't think this is a very nice plow i love the ability to uh, make a v and really trap the snow and and it angles it, it does everything like you would want it to do however it's some sort of electrical response here, right? And so it, it's kind of slow to angle versus a hydraulic system like a hydraulic blade on a tractor, for example. Um, and, and coupled with that, the fact that you have to change direction forward and reverse, I know I'm nitpicking, but I come from the tractor side of things where moving snow with a snow pusher or a plow is just an absolute piece of cake. It's very, very efficient. You don't have to change forward to reverse and reverse to forward and raising and lowering a plow, I mean, can be done while you're moving almost with uh, with the loader joystick. And so everything here is maybe just a bit of a learning curve, but it's a lot of different directions on here that you have to try to memorize the right angles. And I'm sure there's a bit of muscle memory that will take over with time. So this is based on my background, really using snow removal equipment in the tractor world, not the truck world. So you guys that already had a truck or have used a truck to plow snow for years, this is not a big deal for you, I get that. So I'm just giving you my perspective, it's one guy's opinion, and just kind of based on what your user experience is, your mileage may vary. One of the other complaints that I read online I haven't really experienced it yet or had an issue with it. But the location of this air filter right here, you can see it's fairly down uh, low on the machine here and on the side where you could have a lot of mud and, and I guess even snow splash up here and kind of clog and restrict the airflow. I can see that being a problem. So one of the other minor complaints I have, and I'm telling you, it's probably gonna turn into a big complaint if I ever have to deal with it, but that's gonna be the, uh, the battery location. Looks like you got the washer fill right here too, but that's your battery tucked behind everything. I mean, I'm not sure how this could get more inconvenient. I'm trying to see, there, maybe there's a magic trick to it and I can't, I can't figure it out yet and maybe it'll come to me, but you got the air filter in place up here with some brackets that are holding it in place. You got part of the frame here. You got your washer fluid there. You got the fender right here. It's just like hidden in there in a very inconvenient spot. For now, while things are going good, not so much of a big deal. However, down the road when I have to service that or jump it or whatever else, I'm not gonna be very happy. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on here, but you may have been able to tell it's tucked back in there so good and behind everything else that it's hard to even get good footage of it. But I will say on the tractor side of things, John Deere has been known to put batteries in a less than convenient location. I wish they would try to find some other area that was more readily accessible, not just on their gators, but on their tractors too. You do have a really nice set of wheels and tires on here also. So of course they look really nice. They got the Maxxis Bighorn 2.0. Even says these are a radial tire, so that's pretty sweet to see. Looks like the size is a 27 by 11 R14 on the backs. On the fronts here, we're looking at a 27 by nine R14. You think they make a set of these for my 1025R? That'd be pretty sweet.
Hey, so we're back out here a couple days later, realized I wanted to include some more information and we also had at least a skiff of snow. It's not much, but it's at least something worth plowing. Unfortunately, we drove over it. All the things I tell you not to do, I gotta listen to these myself, you know, drive over it, mark your driveway, get a UHMW edge for your plow, all sorts of stuff, you know, but I do wanna tell you, I love the power steering in these gators. You know, I have only used power steering on a couple of ATVs or quads, and this is my first uh, UTV or side-by-side -side that's had power steering as well. If you've used the, the manual steering that's on all the old Gators and the old uh, ATVs, this is a night and day difference. It makes it so much easier to use. And I also have one other thing I wanna tell you about too. I do love this winch that we have. It's located in the rear receiver, but you can unplug it at this harness and move it to the front as well. We've got a snow plow on the front so i have it on the back side but it's very easy to do if you get this kind of setup from john deere make sure you get the extra harnesses that go along with it you're going to have um, a lot of wiring that's involved going to the front and the back side also since i have electrical connections up front for a plow or a winch there's going to be an extra y cable that you can plug into a harness up there to have easier access to plug in either the electrical components for the winch or the electrical components for the plow your controls for the winch are stored in the glove compartment right in the front with a very long cable to be able to reach to the back or to the front and operate with the on off switch. You do want to make sure your machine is turned on or at least in the accessory position. What do you think about that? Is that going to work? Is that going to work for you? Okay. Well, hopefully that gives you an informed overview, the good, the bad stuff. Again, I'm not trying to sell this to you. I don't sell gators. I don't really have any plans to sell gators, but it's a real world perspective on somebody who owns one of these. And would I buy one again? Probably, but I'd probably look hard at the gasoline version over the diesel. It's gonna be cheaper. I think a little bit peppier, um, but leave a comment down below if you've done a comparison of your own, if you own one of these, if you own the gasoline or the diesel, why you went one way or another, we'd love to get your feedback on that. Of course, I am in the market of selling tractors and tractor attachments, so if you are in the market for one of those, read through that description right down below, a lot of helpful links down there, or you can find where to get to goodworkstractors.com to place an order. I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. If you want to see more cool videos like this one, hit that subscribe button right down below, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. All done? You wanna go inside? Okay, all right, come here. Come here, come right here. Let's get you. There we go. All right.